Hey there, everybody. Welcome to our review of The Blacklist Season 1, Episode 13, <laughs> a.k.a. The Cypress Agency, which I will not remember The Cypress Agency whatsoever, so I don't even know how much we'll talk about that. This is the this is the Diane Fowler episode. This is where Reddington offs Diane, has this big discussion. I In my head, I thought this was later in the season than it actually is. Yeah, I thought so, too, sort of thinking back. But, I mean, it's it's been almost 10 seasons, so, you know, memory fades. This is a great reminder that Raymond Reddington has no problem killing anyone, basically, including just, like high-ranking officials that would seemingly get him into, like, an inordinate amount of trouble. It's like, this, it's a really memorable episode. I think this is an episode that further blows up some theories that people may have out there about mm -hmm. Reddington's identity. Mm -hmm. Before we go into it, though, hit that subscribe button, because guess what, guys? Season 10 filming, really, really right around the corner. Like, there are location scouting that's happening mm -hmm. right now. Like, you can really see the buildup to production there was even like somebody took a photo of james fader with like a beard and really long hair he's got that vacation beard going on and thank you to everyone who's been watching these with us every friday you know we really appreciated you guys suggesting that we do the season one rewatch, and we're really glad that we did it's getting us ready i mean there's a lot of stuff going through this to sort of just remember a lot about Mira who you know is going to somewhat be connected to this season with her daughter coming in so it's good to have a refresher on it all but also follow us over yeah. on our Instagram Matt and Just TV okay like the the biggest thing to say here about the Diane Fowler situation at least to me is that if this entire sequence is still meant to be canon like if this isn't something the producers just like scrubbed and we're not supposed to remember after mm -hmm. the fact. I think it completely destroys the idea that Reddington is Katarina. Like completely. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Like, you chose violence. I am today. here for violence because okay, let's she explicitly talks about how she knows the truth about, you know, his family and what happened and all of this sort of stuff. And he's just like, you know, kills her and then he's like, you know, if you know I can find out somewhere else too. It's like if Reddington is Katarina, Katarina would already know because her family would be Liz and with Liz every day with the task force. It's like there's no there's no mystery there that needs to be solved unless there's like some huge lost chapter of, you know, Reddington slash Katarina's life that we didn't know about. It's like the Katarina theory just makes no sense when you think about what Fowler actually said. Yeah, when when she said that, sort of the, don't you want to know? I know the things about that night. I know things about your family. And he's like, yeah, I do want to know. So that's, the minute that he said that, I was kind of like, oh, there's some stuff that you don't know about yeah. this particular night, about your own family. Like, this, this makes it really interesting. I did find it kind of strange, though, that he was sitting in front of somebody who knew stuff he wanted to know, and he wasn't like, just a minute. Beep, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Brimley, can you come over here? I need your help. <laughs> like, true. honestly, like his whole assumption that if she knows someone else knows, that's not necessarily 100%. It's not 100%. He doesn't in that moment know that for sure. And I'm really surprised he didn't make the call to Brimley instead of Kaplan to be like, you need to come over here and get this out of her. And then, you know, we'll call Kaplan to clean all up. <sighs> Why did I never think of this? Like, I've seen this episode, like, four times, and that's, you're totally right. I, I never thought that he should have just, yeah, because he totally should have just called Brimley. I mean, yeah, there's no guarantee that Brimley gets it out, but why not try? Oh, come on, Brimley gets to the answers, <laughs> and even if there's no answers, like he did with Mira, where he was like, eh, she's clean. It's yeah. just like, you have him at your disposal. Diane is right here here she has answers you have her where nobody knows you have her right now pick up the phone and make that call i kind of like re-watching it the second time i was still like i still don't get why he didn't make that choice yeah. this is a very weird choice to be like eh if you know other people know it's just like mm, you don't know that <laughs> Well, this is why i kind of i look at this scene now and i sort of wonder a lot like is this still relevant to the story the Blacklist is telling? Like, at some point, did they actually change their mind about who Reddington really is? And they're just sort of hoping that people forget about 
these little moments. Because, like, another thought that sort of entered my mind here, too, is the idea of, okay, you know, maybe this is the real Reddington and she's talking to some extent. I don't know about Jennifer, about Naomi, about, like, that sort of... But if that was the case, we already have seen that Reddington does not give any Fs at all about Jennifer. Like, he made that very, very clear throughout a lot of the show. Like, even when she died, he didn't really have that much of her reaction. Yeah, so, which is kind of, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I don't think it really charts with this being the real Reddington either, based <laughs> on the information that we have. And I wanted to believe in that theory a long time, but this is where I completely just go out of left field and I'm just like, okay, either it's like, you know, a sibling of somebody or this Reddington is just like somebody who was really close to Katarina or an associate or we're never meant to know. And it's just all wah, 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 wah. that one <laughs> we're never meant to know. And I know, of course, we've spoken about this a lot. That yeah. There are lots of fans out there that believe that a, a solid answer was given of who Reddington is. And I'm in the camp of, until I have that that beautiful monologue from James Spader explaining himself being like, I am actually fill in the blank here. Yeah. Katarina, uh, the uncle, a stranger that works at Burger King, whoever <laughs> you actually are, I want to hear him say it for multiple reasons. One, I want it to be 100% confirmed where there is none yeah. of this discussion in Wiggle Room. I just also, I love a good James Spader monologue and have Reddington give these beautiful speeches. And I can't imagine how good it's going to be that particular reveal, but I don't think it's ever coming. They can't walk back the end of season eight. They just can't. I think it's, it's going to be really, really hard to deliver something at the end of all of this. Like the other... The other thing I sort of thought about, and I, I'm sure people have probably said this over the years too, is just like, well, maybe <laughs> Diane didn't actually know what she thought that she knew. And maybe she That's thought cool. she was thinking about, you know, the real Reddington and like, you know, that person's family. But then if that was the case, why would Reddington then eventually say somebody else knows if you know? Because then he, because he would already know then that sort of what she's talking about doesn't matter, that it's irrelevant. So this is all still a mystery. We still don't have any clarification. If you guys think this means something beyond what we're talking about here, you know, just let us know in the comments. Okay, so the Cypress Agency, it's all about adoption and sort of this evil adoption agency yeah. that's going on. And of course, there's lots of themes of adoption this season. We know that Liz yeah. was adopted. She's looking to adopt. Now there's this criminal who's part of an adoption agency. And she calls it out to Reddington. She's like, this isn't a coincidence that I'm like just a couple weeks away from becoming a mom and adopting my baby and you're going to bring me this? Come on. And, you know, he doesn't deny it. He's basically like, unless you're 100% sure that Tom is who he says he is, you, you know, you can't go through with this. You have to be sure. And so the whole real purpose of this Blacklister of the Week is so that she ends up talking to people, talking to a couple who's like, oh man, yeah. our marriage was kind of shaky and, you know, this didn't work out and whatever. And I was like, okay, I, I get that. If you got a shaky marriage, then yeah, you know, it's not time to have a baby. But then when you really look at what's going on with Liz and Tom and where they are now, after everything that had happened before. So she had brought him in and all that stuff that happened where he was interrogated. Since then... Besides this Jolene nonsense, yeah. their relationship isn't bad. Like it's it's not at a 10 out of 10, but it's kind of at like an eight and a half or an eight out of 10. And that's about as good as most marriages can be. I'm kidding. That's a joke. I'm just joking. Please don't come for me, all you happily married people. Um, but it was, it kind of felt like it was just, it was getting pushed into this direction so that at the end of this episode, she can be like, I'm just not sure. I don't know. You know, we're, we're at this place in our marriage. You know, if you really look at our marriage, do you think it's okay? And I was just like, I think he does think it's okay. Yeah. Like everything that we've been told, you know, yeah, there's suspicions. Of course there is. It's been since the first episode, you know, is Tom who he says he is. And 
throughout this season, he's passed every test. Like, yeah, he's flirting with Jolene. He shouldn't be doing that, but that's not... He's an international spy or whatever he's going to be doing behind the scenes, right? So this was the first episode where I was really like, Tom is a bad guy. And here it is. And it's because of that scene with Jolene. And it's not because they kind of were like, oh, you know, let's really think about this. I don't really want to have this baby with you. Our marriage is on the rocks. And he went over to be like, hey, <laughs> that wasn't it. It was if he was really who he said he was and he was as invested in becoming a father with his wife as he said he was while he was in that car with her and she was like hey it'll be okay baby that he would be like really broken like broken in his feelings that he is not going to be a dad to have that ripped away at the last second completely heartbreaking then your marriage is being ripped apart dump on top of that and he was smiling with her i was just like oh okay there is something very wrong now i think it's it's really a lot more clear watching it back than it was maybe at least for me like the first time when i watched it way way back when when the show was first on like you know you see it in an even clearer light of okay something is very very wrong with how Tom is acting. And maybe that was a big point of this episode for us to be able to sort of read in between all of this and sort of see the responses, his behavior of it. Like from, because from a blacklister perspective itself, like the Cypress Agency is like one of my least favorite mm -hmm. blacklisters that we've had so far in the show. And it's just because like their whole existence to Even me. Even more than the robot. Okay. The robots. I will defend to the day I die. Oh my the God, robot the worst episode. <laughs> it wasn't good, but it was memorable and it was stupid. It was stupid in a oh entertaining boy. way. And that's sort of the thing about it. It's just like I will take, you know, stupid entertaining over completely just forgettable. And the, the this whole blacklister case was just a plot device. It was just mm -hmm. to sort of establish, okay, here is where Liz is when it comes to adoption. And the stuff with Liz and Tom, like that stuff was good. It's just that that stuff to me completely overshadows anything with the blacklister. And I'm not even going to just remember that part of it even a few days from now. For sure. It was there to push forward the whole adoption story. I mean, Liz called it out was like, yeah. you're, this is not a coincidence. And Red's kind of like, yeah, you're right. It's not a coincidence. <laughs> so take a look at yourself. Take a look at your husband. Really take a look at what you're doing. You know, here's the opportunity that, you know, sometimes you just need to look at it yourself and you need to dive in deep. And I'm giving you that opportunity. I, I'm excited to sort of get into more now of the Blacklisters later this season and also <laughs> kind of explore more of the emotional aftermath of this for Liz and Tom now that I'm sort of seeing kind of a lot of what you discussed about why, you know, how Tom sort of seems so hollow and smiling after a lot of this. It's a better Tom character study than I think we've had mm -hmm. in the past. But of course, we want some season 10 news and we got to have that. And yeah, and I think it's coming up pretty soon. I mean, yeah. it looks like they're going to be filming starting next week. So hopefully next Friday, either we're going to have another rewatch or if there's actual news for season 10, we will have it here next Friday. All right, well, thank you guys for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you here next time.